Democratic side. With Clinton and Obama running neck and neck, the race could ultimately be decided by the party's superdelegates. So who are these people? Well, joining us to explain is New York City Councilman Simka Felder. Welcome, Councilman Felder. Uh, we've been hearing this word the last couple of weeks, superdelegates, superdelegates. You're here to explain who they are and what they are. So what are superdelegates? Well, good morning. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yes. Well, uh, since the 1970s, when George McGovern was appointed by the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. I should say as a result of the primaries, people were upset about their, their choice for president. They came up with a compromise where 80 percent of the delegates for the Democratic Party would be chosen by the people in primaries, and about 20 percent would be chosen by superdelegates who are Congress people, okay. uh, uh, governors, as well as what we would call distinguished members of the party, such as Al Gore and people like him, they comprise 20 percent. So out of the total uh, number of delegates, you get about 20 percent of the superdelegates. And they're going to be very important in this election because it's so neck and neck. So why are superdelegates playing such a huge role in this election, and why is it going to come down to them? Well, as we see, this is a very tight race, and I might say that this is really a wonderful testament to our country where you have such a tight race and there is the ability of every individual to make their vote count. We, we've seen this battle going almost like a wrestling fight mm -hmm. for the last round and, and the superdelegates get to choose whoever they want. It's not as though they're compelled by anyone. A lot, a lot of uh, politicians and a lot of uh, political analysts actually do say that uh, Mrs. Clinton has the superdelegates sort of in her back pocket because it's sort of old school Washington, D.C. insiders, like you said, governors and uh, uh, congressmen. So does Obama stand a chance in this uh, sort of old world, new world, you know, solutions for America? You know, the, both the campaigns going head to head on different platforms here. I think that the, the party and certainly the superdelegates should make sure to represent what the people in their districts or their states really want. Now there are states where clearly, let's say Senator Clinton has won decisively, mm -hmm. then obviously most people in that state want her. Well, there are other Obama states, fine. Where it's a split, mm -hmm. then I understand the delegate taking a Well, choice. if there is a split in those areas, is there going to be sort of a backlash to the whole superdelegate system? Well, we, we are, I, I hope that the superdelegates do not play smoke room filled politics by deciding on their own who they want or who the party hacks want. Mm -hmm. All right, we're talking about primaries today, especially in uh, Wisconsin, Hawaii. Uh, we also have Mrs. Clinton is banking on Texas and Ohio. How is this all going to play out? Because they're I, really split on a lot of these states right I'm now. I'm very excited. I hope it continues to be as exciting as it has been. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a wonderful thing for the system for it to be as competitive and to go down. You know, some people in the party say this is not a good thing. I think it's a very good thing for the country, in particular for the Democratic Party, to have a good, tight, tough race. Well, let's uh, hope the delegates do what, and the superdelegates do what the American people voted them to do. We hope so. We hope they do. Thank you very much, Councilman Felder, for coming in and stopping by. Of course, we'll have more information on superdelegates on our website at cw11.com slash morning news. We're going to be right back.